would be fine. Yes. Um, so last time we were interrupted somehow, but I didn't finish quite this example. Um, so <coughs> I'm trying to describe the center of um, the northern algebra of SL2. Uh, but I will still have to make some assumptions. I will make an assumption that uh, the center is, uh, is generated by, by this uh, four elements, uh, x, y, z, and the present element, which uh, is here. Okay. Of course, one can check directly that all these elements are um, in the center. Uh, I will explain later why uh, the center is generated by this element. At least uh, I will give you some indication that it uh, is true. Uh, but uh, the non-trivial thing here is that uh, I'm marking <coughs> this is zero case, but it's like just a polynomial algebra. Here we have more generators, and so there should be a relation. And I say that this relation actually is that this is equal to zero. So Q is zero. And uh, so how can we uh, prove without really more than anything uh, about uh, uh, the center that this, this element is zero in SO2? There are two ways uh, to do this. You can, of course, just uh, compute in, in the interval. And then you, you just take this as if you erase it uh, to the power of t. At some point, when, when you start erasing it using commutator relation, you will see this, this element will start appearing. So, but uh, to get this uh, right, that would not be enough. So this would take me a lot of work. Another way to do it, um, well, is to uh, observe that the Jacobson value uh, of U of G is actually zero. The Jacobson radical <coughs> is the intersection of, uh, of all uh, irreducible uh, G modules by definition. And, uh, uh, but there is another characterization. I gave an exercise last yeah. time. Uh, how can you prove that the Jacobson radical for a large class of rings is zero? There is a characterization, so x belongs to uh, the Jacobson radical of ring k, which I uh, wrote last time, uh, if and only if 1 plus y is invertible, invertible uh, in a for every y uh, in the left ideal generated by by me, for everyone. And now um, try to imagine uh, what happens uh, when we have uh, such an equality, one plus uh, one plus y is equal to zero, um, just by looking at one plus x. So you need to find some element z so that this, this is equal to one in the enveloping logic. But then you can pass to the corresponding graded element. So then you, this will be, uh, uh, so zero of x, zero z, should be equal to zero. And this implies that, uh, well, zero of is zero. So this is the reason of that, that uh, the corresponding graded algebra does not have uh, zero divide. So therefore, uh, the Jacobson radical, well, we may assume it is zero for a large class uh, of rings, in which we will include double algebras when I come to them. Um, and now, uh, so to show that this element is zero, uh, well, we, we just have to show that it annihilates any reducible mode. Next, we observe uh, that there are two summons here. So both summons are actually G invariant. This is G invariant because C is a Casimir. So it clearly is uh, invariant. And so therefore, every element in this product is. Uh, this element is also invariant because essentially what is written here is a Casimir element for symmetric algebra. For the symmetric algebra. And therefore, it is also G invariant because this thing can use uh, in the center. And the whole thing looks precisely like Casimir in the symmetric algebra. So this is also a uh, gene wave. Now, <clears throat> why is this useful? Well, it's useful because <clears throat> then we may assume uh, that we are reduced to a certain very special T characters. So we have uh, irreducible representations, lots of them. They are parameterized in some sense by P characters. 
every picarator can occur as uh, the picar every linear function can occur as a picarator. But since we observe this, we may, we may just look at the orbits, coadjoint orbits. And there are very few coadjoint orbits in SL2, they are the same as in characteristic zero. So we may assume that chi is zero, or chi comes from an important element E, or it's a semi-simple element, so it's a multiple of it. We have a duality uh, between <coughs> G and G star. So now this reduces the problem slightly, and uh, uh, what, what do these things have in common? All these characters which are written here, they vanish on the derived subalgebra of Borel, and Borel is just K, H plus K. So every character of that form will vanish on E, so it's not going to vanish on H in general. But uh, the condition, so therefore, <coughs> since it vanishes on E, uh, we may construct this uh, induced module, which is sometimes called baby vacuum. And such things can be constructed uh, well, for any Lie algebra reductive group, provided that the P character vanishes on the new radical of a bird. Then you can induce from one dimensional representation, because if P character does not vanish, well, then there is no way to induce from one dimensional representation. In this case, uh, uh, that would not be possible, but in our situation, yes. so... So what is new? What uh, is new? New is just a number. Uh, well, new is an eigenvalue of h for this element. So uh, h is so a number. Well, new is just new one. So mm -hmm. new is an eigenvector of h. So that's what it is. And new can be, uh, well, a priori, of course, you can induce from, from any new, but since we are in this, uh, re <coughs> reduced and long algebra setting, then we have this relation. HP minus H is lambda P1. Here I have to arrange my trace form so that H from H is 1, which I, I just renormalized. It doesn't matter. So this will give us a condition on new. So new, uh, we can induce in this setting if and only if new to the P minus new is lambda to the P. So if lambda is zero, that would be just an element in, in the field of P elements. So there are only finitely many wavy Verma modules you can get in, in all ways, including in this case. Okay, uh, now, so any um, finite dimension irreducible G module, well, under these assumptions, will be a homomorphic image of this wavy Verma module. Because it will have at least one such eigenvector, and this module is sort of universal uh, for, for U pi uh, G mod, this eigenvector for V. Right, so <laughs> therefore we don't even uh, need to look at irreducible portions. It suffices to show that Q annihilates uh, uh, this vector, just one vector, uh, one mean. So we just need to show that Q, when we apply it to one new, we get zero. Now, uh, this is how uh, CX on, uh, on one new, uh, because of, of the way I've chosen this cousin event like that. And um, of course, X and E, X and Y, because Y is F to the P, uh, so Z, and I commute, so X is going to kill this, P to the P, E annihilates uh, isolated vectors. So therefore, the only thing that X is with Z squared, and Z squared, um, is h plus 1 square, oh no, sorry, uh, and uh, z square is, is just hp minus h square, that's why we have this number. And then when you plug everything, you will see that after a computation, uh, you will see that it, it actually annihilates for any one. So then the computation shows that that Q, when you apply it to one U is zero, and this implies that Q is zero. So therefore, we do have a relation. I, I, I will try to explain later why it is the only relation in this case. There is nothing else. So, but um, now let's try to uh, compute uh, similar points. So that, therefore, the first house lights is at G. Uh -huh. 
We never use the remark that this Q is G by is under the group. I, mean. I, I did use uh, I did use I use stronger and I use uh, both terms are G by. Uh, it's enough to to be invariant under for the other. We can understand it. It's enough to be invariant under the D other. No, not in this case because I'm uh, trying to use the ordered here as well. I'm trying to reduce the number of uh, people. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So for the real algebra, well, yeah. Okay. Um, so can you explain again why it's enough to prove that Q applies to one moving field? Well, because Q is central, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, uh, Q is central, and this module is generated mm -hmm. over the real algebra just by one single constant. Yeah. So therefore, if you choose, if you check that pure annihilates this, that it will annihilate the whole Verma module. Yeah. Then it will annihilate every factor module of, of this module. So, and every irreducible module is a factor of this. Why universal property of this this module? But these are not, not, there are other modules which are not this uh, well, that, that's also a good question. Uh, irreducible modules, almost all of them actually are this type, except when chi is zero. When chi is zero, they, these, these modules have dimension p, and so they will have um, they will have composition factors and the quotient will be just modules for algebraic group as well. So L of m, the sky is straight m from zero up to p minus one. And the Steinberg module will be the only one which is this, because it has dimension. So, um, so that uh, that of G now is uh, is given by the relation. Uh, now let me write the coordinates. And, uh, and uh, so I will just have to rewrite it. But mm -hmm. uh, another question. Does this imply that uh, S uh, over S two being the invariance in the symmetric algebra is not as homomorphic to the same. Yeah, no, I'm coming to this. Uh -huh. That's exactly my point. Yeah, we are coming to this now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so now we know everything uh, about this variety is given by uh, just by one uh, equation, and you can check. It's very easy to see. And it's actually irreducible uh, polynomial and four variables. So to compute the tangent space uh, for for this variety, we just we, we have to differentiate this respect to x, this respect to y with respect to Z and with respect to C. So what uh, differentiated this with respect to C is a little bit awkward. So what can we do? Well, let's just do something formal. We, we take this product, I belongs to a T, and we take the square root of C, and then we will have well, this is the square root of C square minus I square, I belongs to a T. And then uh, we use obvious relation here, and then we can derive uh, square root of C minus I square, where I belongs to FP. And of course, this is going to be uh, uh, square root of C to the power of P uh, minus square root of C square. So uh, I'm doing this some formal manipulation with these things to, to simplify this because I'm going to compute derivative. And then when you square it, so what, what do we get? And we get uh, c to the p. When I raise it, when I square this, I, and then the square root will disappear. Minus two uh, c to p plus one over two uh, plus c. So so we just derive this equation. But what happened to the double product? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> so we, we start with, uh, with the first sum here, with this one. To compute it, I just formally write C as square root of C squared. And then I will, uh, well, this will be C minus I, C plus I. But since I take a product of all elements in FP, this is just the same thing. Ah. Yes. So all elements in FP involved, so therefore, I will have uh, this thing, and then when the square again, we can get rid of this value. So, well, there are many different ways to prove this. And now, uh, so what happens when we compute uh, a derivative? Well, let's see. 
x, y, z, c uh, belongs to the singular locus of, uh, of z, g, uh, if and only if. Well, when we differentiate with respect to x, then it will tell us that y is equal to 0. When we differentiate with respect to y, it will tell us x is equal to 0. B is bigger than 2, so it's not going to, uh, well, confront us that 2 is not 0 in our case, so we also have z is equal to 0. And when we differentiate this, then we will get c to the power p minus 1 over 2 is equal to 1. So when we differentiate, but the derivative of this will be 1, and the derivative of this will be p minus 1 over 2 with some coefficient. If you multiply it, then you get 1. And now, uh, so, so therefore, uh, this is it. Uh, so this means that the singular locus is finite. It's a finite set that then consists of elements 0, 0, 0, uh, k squared, where k uh, <coughs> belongs to f equals. So therefore, um, uh, the number of singular points is equal to p minus one over two. Now suppose p is uh, bigger than three. So if p is bigger than three. Uh, If p is bigger than 3, uh, this is uh, bigger than 1. So there are finitely many uh, singular points uh, on this hypersurface. <coughs> and now let's look at the corresponding, uh, <coughs> at the corresponding invariant ring for, for the symmetric algebra. So now let's look at uh, S G upper G. So uh, in characteristic zero, this would be actually isomorphic to uh, the center by the force theorem. But in this case, one can prove by the similar method. In fact, it will be used later. Um, so this is generated by these elements: e to the p, f to the p, h to the p. The derivative of these powers of elements in any uh, algebra are uh, killed by derivation, so gx is derivation, therefore this will all will be in, in this ring. So the analog of P center, so to say. And now what else do we have? Well we have also Casimir, uh, but the Casimir looks somewhat different, so it's h squared plus four uh, e. And what's the relation? Well maybe I relate I just rename it so this will be u, this will be e, this will be w and this will be, well, let's call it C, I guess. Well, so it's a different test. So then we will have um, uh, C to the power of E is equal to, uh, um, is equal to W squared plus 4 G. But didn't we call E to the P, didn't we call it big X? I mean, I'm uh, confused. We could call it big X if you want. No, you uh, just called it. I did, yeah, yeah, but now they belong to a different thing. Is I it different? Yeah, yeah, for videos. Yes. Yeah, well, but I can rename it. Inside UG, well, the right? the point is that I would still have to use W because yeah, now it's not it's not it's not Ah, it's sorry. Yeah. It's not yeah. inside UG. It's Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. So confusing. So, um, <laughs> now, <laughs> so they have um, now the way this relation comes. The situation comes from just erasing this to this power. When you erase it to this power, uh, well, in characteristic P, it's very easy to do. So, I guess it's coming back. Um, uh, now, that's for you. So, uh, so the spectrum is now, um, or maybe I should just write, uh, Singular locus immediately because it's clear that differentiating this uh, is fairly straightforward. So we have U B W C uh, belongs to the singular locus. 
uh, of this spectrum. Uh, if and only if, well, when we differentiate u is has to be zero, d has to be zero, and w has to be zero, now we differentiate with respect to u with w. But when we differentiate with respect to c, we don't get anything new because the derivative of that will be zero. So, uh, of course, I would actually write any lambda here, so c uh, is equal to any lambda, but the problem is that there is only one value of lambda for which such a point belongs to this uh, hyperspin, namely zero. So therefore, automatically c also has to be zero, although differentiating doesn't tell us anything. So already these conditions is, uh, are enough. And so the conclusion is, uh, the conclusion is that uh, uh, there is only one singular point, just one uh, singular point, namely or zero. And now we see that uh, these uh, invariant rings cannot be isomorphic because if these algebras are isomorphic, then the corresponding maximal spectra will have the same uh, singularity. At least uh, they, have, they have the same cardinality in this case. We have one, and in this case, we have four. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, what happens when p is three? When p is three, uh, I didn't check, to be honest. Because, but no, this but argument can't. doesn't work. <laughs> no, okay, because, okay, so, yeah. so, so the, the question is, they are different for yeah. P bigger than yeah. 3. Well, at no. least, yeah. Okay. Maybe it's, uh, they're also different for P into 3, but I don't okay. know how to prove No, because I was reading P uh -huh. bigger than 2, but okay, because no, all this computation... Did I, did I, oh, sorry. Yeah, in the exercise, you in said the exercise it was bigger would, than 2. Okay. Did I say bigger than 3, or? Yes, you did. You said bigger than 2. Sorry. 2? If I said big, big bigger in than the two, it was yesterday, unfair. You, you, it was not an easy exercise. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> bigger than three, it was okay. But what, <laughs> <laughs> but what about this, this one about Jacobson Okay, so um, so uh, now I have to finish this sentence. Uh, so Z of G is not isomorphic to uh, the invariant. <laughs> it's a true of it has the same dimension. It has the same dimension, yes. Uh, this one has the second dimension equal to the dimension of, of the real. Uh, um, now let me state, <coughs> maybe, uh, Maybe I will just <coughs> begin with a, a general setup because at some point I have to come to the algebras of uh, reductive proofs. Now, <coughs> this is what I'm going to assume. Uh, these assumptions are very tricky. So, uh, so let G be a, a connected reductive K group. So it is. Uh, reduced <coughs> G is a Lie algebra of G and we know it has a canonical uh, this power map uh, and then we, as we, we make the following assumption which is sometimes called standard so I suppose uh, the derived subgroup G upper 1 which some people denote G of G uh, is simply connected well, this ensures that uh, the derived subgroup at least the composes the product of uh, <coughs> simple ideas by a simple normal subgroup. It's a direct form. Um, and uh, suppose that there is a rational representation, there is a finite dimensional rational representation rule of that group. <coughs> in finite dimensional vector space V uh, such that um, um, the differential uh, D rho by that scale then, uh, which gives rise to a representation of, of the Lie algebra uh, G is faithful. 
The corresponding trace form is non degenerate. And the trace form uh, associated with this representation, I will denote it like this. X, Y, Z, trace of uh, Z, Rho, X, uh, Z, Rho, Y, for all X, Y in the Lie algebra <coughs> is non degenerate. <coughs> Actually implies, that, although it's not obvious, was recently proved by Skip very badly. So this implies that automatically uh, that uh, B, which is a characteristic, I also work uh, at the moment in the characteristic P case, uh, is a good prime. Is a good prime for. Uh, <coughs> for the root system of, of G with respect to maximum torus T. So this is phi uh, B in the root system. Uh, T maximum torus. Um, so uh, the reason one has to go into this uh, is as follows. First, uh, it's very nice if you just uh, start with a simple group and then uh, all this would go away. However, uh, in this type of theory, you have to pass from a group to a Levy subgroup. And then Levy subgroups are reductive, and you have to do something. So you want your assumptions that you impose from the start to continue to hold for all Levy subgroups. And this assumption that G1 is upper one is simply connected still holds. And also the trace form also exists. So, um, Another thing, uh, because there will be some technicalities related with the Lie algebra, there is no, in general, decomposition of, of the Lie algebra as direct sum of the right subalgebra plus the center in this setting. So, um, mm -hmm. this is the same issue here. What about very good? If you, if you have GL? Yeah, I, I will replace it by uh, GLB, but it has a trace form associated with the vector representation. GLB is fine. Um, but SLV would not be fine if P divides yeah. dimension. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So another way to do it, uh, as I think Janssen prefers this way, it, it also works. <coughs> you can start with uh, um, a split reductive group scheme over Z, and then you obtain your uh, algebraic group by base change. And this also works. Because then the Levy uh, subgroup is also a uh, reductive group scheme over Z, split, and so it works as well. But one still to need something about the derived set. Excuse me, can you write down the condition by Janssen? What is it precisely? You said it very quickly. The hypothesis, yeah. But this is not what I'm assuming. I can write it. Oh, down. I see. Yeah, I see. So it's not the, equivalent to your. No, 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 no. Okay. So Thank you. This, this would be another up, another possible setting to, to develop the same type okay. of theory. Thank you. Which may have some advantages, but not so many. Right. So since we're going to um, uh, eventually uh, come to the point where I will have to describe this sentence. Uh, let me state a theory on which is uh, what was proved by Scrabin. It's again rather general uh, result. So it's a uh, theory on uh, the Journal of LMS uh, 2002. Now we have, um, so that will be uh, any 
finite dimensional respect of algebra. <clears throat> and um, so let V be a uh, finite dimensional uh, restricted uh, L mod. Restricted means that it has P character and the this P character is, is equal to zero. So but that, that kind of representation uh, is called restricted. So um, <clears throat> now uh, Ostriadin introduces this number, which, uh, which later will appear as L, but of course it depends on the Lie algebra and on V. And this is the minimal dimension of stabilizers uh, of, uh, of vectors uh, in V. So GV is a stabilizer. Uh, consists of all X, in, oh sorry, this is L. Uh, consists of all uh, x in L such as x dot v is here. Uh, now, uh, suppose that we somehow manage uh, to find sufficiently many uh, invariants. So let f1, fl, precisely this number of invariant functions uh, Oh, sorry. On the ring of regular functions on the invariant conversation of, of, of this Lie algebra. Sometimes one can do it, sometimes it's difficult. Well, suppose we found uh, E such that uh, a Jacobian locus um, uh, such that D e minus the Jacobian locus of these functions uh, has, uh, has dimen uh, co dimension uh, bigger than equal to 2. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to explain what uh, Jacobian locus is. Well, it's sort of. Uh, so this number L could be 0. This number L could be 0 easily, yes. Well, then we, of course, have no function of this time. So, <coughs> yes, it won't be this. So, okay, that, well, Jacobian locus um, um, is a set of all x, uh, of all x in D such that the differentials uh, of these functions that D are linearly dependent. as linear functions on, uh, on, on D. So I suppose that this Jacobian locus is, uh, is not to be. Then, uh, then the following uh, strong conditions hold. Uh, so the first statement is, uh, is this. <coughs> uh, we automatically know that uh, the invariant tree is generated by these powers So since L acts on, on this algebra as derivations, of course, piece powers will automatically be X and V. Uh, X and V also, well, maybe, yeah, yes, yes, thank you. All V in V such that the, the differentials are linearly independent. Uh, so it's generated by, um, by these functions over, over this obvious part. Um, and moreover, um, and this invariant tree is a free module it is a free module uh, over uh, yeah over this uh, subring this basis three basis uh, Consists of monomials f1 to the power a1, fl to the power al, where ai runs uh, from 0 up to uh, p minus 1. That's the first one. So as long as you found this nice invariance, 
uh, then uh, you basically know the invariant in, in this case. So your k of v is it symmetrical algebra of v star? It is symmetric algebra of v star. Yes, the same thing. Um, this can be applied, by the way, also in characteristic zero and, and get some new results in invariant theory. That when we use reduction mod p for p very big. So um, this is the first part. Um, now the second part is, uh, in fact, one can say what this rig is. One can uh, write down relations. So the second part is uh, the invariant ring is a complete intersection of the ring. So more precisely, we can write it down as follows. So we have um, uh, we have k v up at p at the ring that we had before. We have some free variables t1, tl, and these free variables will play the role of f i. But now we need to write down relations uh, subject to the following relation. So we have c1 to the t minus f1 to the t, uh, c l to the t minus f l to the t. And that's the idea. Uh, it may look strange because this looks like it's not even an irreducible polynomial, but observe that uh, f itself does not belong to this. Only the piece power of it is here. So, so it's a, a complete intersection uh, in the phase corning spectrum with the complete intersection in a fine space of dimension L plus dimension of V, and this is will be defining idea. <coughs> and one can also know uh, the smooth points. Uh, so, so let phi be the quotient morphism. Uh, so portion more, of course, this uh, strange thing is just a maximal spectrum of, uh, of this invariant thing. Uh, then, uh, 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 pi of, uh, sorry? Uh, this uh, is just an, uh, uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, I define the V model. If, if, if this yeah. would be a group, then this ah. would be clear. Yeah. But it's just a name. Yes, yes. yes. Just a notation. It, I, I agree, it's a little misleading. I'm just trying to follow this. I just changed notation in the statement. And he actually proves a more general result than what I mean. Then when we subtract this Jacobian locus, also we have one of those. Uh, which is a risk open subset, and this is a smooth slope. Uh, uh, when we apply it to P, then this is a smooth slope. Uh, of that variety. So, um, and the proof is not that uh, long, actually. It relies on uh, some characteristic P methods. Uh, now, how could we apply it to prove that uh, this uh, invariant ring <coughs> for SL2 was generated by the elements we want? So, uh, so applying this, uh, this Uh, this um, this V equal to L equal to SL2 we get uh, immediately uh, we get what we did not prove uh, before that uh, uh, S uh, of SL2 upper SL2 is, uh, is generated by the piece powers. Uh, yes. Maybe I should I should say applying this this. Uh, 
Uh, if star is equal to now what is there anyway? For example, so s on two p has a smooth the smooth locks or the singular locks? Uh, this, well, this this is an open set, so this has to be smooth. So this is an open set, sorry. The Jacobian locus or the it's called? Oh, sorry. Oh, how did I find? So for which they are linearly dependent? I think I made. Should be linearly dependent. Linearly dependent. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I understand your confusion. Maybe we shouldn't write. It's a subtraction on the left too. You wrote v minus. No, now it's correct. Now it's correct. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, now it's correct. Now, now this set is the zeristic one. Because it's now dependent. Then the difference is there is the open and we can't have good animation. Oh, no, it doesn't. Precisely. Now I have to change it. Could we do the same dependent? So uh, now, uh, to, now to check this, uh, this equality, we just need to uh, uh, compute the derivative of C and see that everything uh, holds. So for, for, uh, for one invariant, there's no problem to compute the Jacobian model. OK, uh, now I'm trying, I will try to uh, explain the center of uh, uh, of your G. So this was part uh, 1.8, I think. And now this will be 1.9. So uh, the center of your G for a uh, of G reductive. Uh, and uh, <coughs> the assumptions are, uh, uh, I'm going to use assumptions which are no longer on the board, on, on the group G. Otherwise, it will, will be all wrong. So <coughs> what, what we start is uh, uh, with the invariant, this subset of Chevalier restrictions here, which will still hold in this setting. Uh, so you know, uh, G is isomorphic to G star, and uh, and this is a G equivalent <coughs> isomorphism under the action uh, of the group. So this G out of G, this is something that I will uh, begin to study. It's the same as uh, K uh, G out of G. Because G is uh, isomorphic to uh, G star. Well, there is, of course, a uh, Chevalier restriction theorem uh, in this setting. So let's see the, the Lie algebra of the maximum torus. And under the assumptions that I imposed, uh, it's a Cartan-Sub algebra, a toro cartan -sub algebra. On capital G, we have the same assumptions as before. Yes, for the group. From now on. So, excuse me, S G big G or Gothic G? I'm sorry about this question. No, it's not Gothic. It's G. For the group G, yes. It's a smaller thing. So, it's a, well, the group G X here, the adjoint. Okay, no, no, no. Okay. And look at invariant. Okay, I think it's not G. So this will be part of part of uh, of S G after you going. This one. Thank you. So this is a total Cartan sub algebra. I'm sorry to bother you again about the G and Gothic G. So SG with the big G 
is different from SG Gothic G. I'm sorry it about that. It does not uh, contain peace powers anymore. Because when you apply a group to a peace power, it's not going to stay invariant. The reason it stays invariant under the Lie algebra because it acts as derivations. The group acts as automorphisms. I see. So peace power, uh, well, it's going to be essentially the same function, but you change it by an element of the group. So there yeah. is a big difference. So these are going, to, yes, there is a big difference. But the, the characteristic, same, zero, yeah. characteristic zero is the same, right? In the quantum group of unity case, you're interested in this, there is also a big difference. Because there are two types of the same. One comes from characteristic zero, like, by the way, as there is one view, yes, yes. eventually. Okay. And there is one that the quantum I group see. applies when you specialize the group. Thank you. Things. So uh, this case is very similar in a sense. Well, okay, so then we have a Chevalier restriction theorem, and we have a function uh, uh, on, uh, and then we restrict it to, uh, to, to this part of uh, subalgebra, and then uh, we call this, uh, <coughs> this map uh, J. So let this map J induces uh, um, Isomorphism between uh, 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 is a group and uh, K C and here I will write W because W is a normalizer of maximum totals divided by C. And this maximum torus will act trivially on the real. Mm. So what really is is uh, is a value. So this is uh, the Chevalier restriction here and calls in this set. I, I don't comment on the book. Yeah, before I start, let me say that uh, this is a very long story. And there are many people who contributed to it. So it all started, I don't know when, because someone had to study it for GLN, but Steiner uh, wrote an important paper, and then Springer and Steiner wrote a very important paper. Carson Weisfather computed the center even under weaker assumptions than I'm imposing in a sense. And then there was more. There was a paper by Trinder and Parshall. There was also a contribution by Milner, whose name I already mentioned. Uh, and uh, so there is a contribution by Veltka. And there is a contribution by uh, you know, Mr. <coughs> Romanian, which is more recent. And finally, there is a very nice result of Rudolf Tandre, which I'm going to mention. Which actually fits into uh, this, uh, uh, this frame of very nice. <clears throat> so uh, this theorem can be found uh, in the Springer standard paper. Uh, of course, um, now this map is injected. It's very easy to prove. This is just because g dot uh, but g dot t uh, is dense. It's a risky dense, and this implies that j is injected because it consists of invariant functions. But uh, the problem is how to prove subjectivity. And for subjectivity, one has to do some tricks, and you can read the proof in Springer and Standard. Um, for uh, some uh, straightforward algebras like SLM, uh, well, not quite, when P does not divide them, uh, you can prove it directly just by, by looking at the coefficient of, coefficients of ge generic metrics, also for SO, SP. But when it comes to exceptional types, there is no way to do this. Uh, in fact, there is no way even to visualize invariants, uh, basic invariants. So, uh, hmm? for SLM is not clear? For SLM, uh, when P does not divide them. Uh, in fact, for SLM, when P does not divide them, one does not, one does not know what the invariants are. I will mention it. So there are some subtle things, very subtle. But uh, it isn't good that it is. Uh, P, uh, any P is good for, for type A. Uh, well, well, there is a notion of very good. And, uh, but uh, formally, when I define good, that means P bigger than any coefficient of any positive root. And so any P is then good in type A. But still, there are, when P does divide N, then it's not good. 
for many reasons. Uh, and it's <coughs> sorry, sorry. It's not uh, I will mention. Yeah, there are some there are some interesting things. Maybe shall we have a break and then I will consider functions that we are imposing. Uh, this is very unreal. Uh, is free. So it's a polynomial algebra, mm -hmm. you know, variable. I should say L is dimensional T. This is the same as dimensional capital. Mm -hmm. So it is really generated by L function. Mm -hmm. And all the prior homogeneous. And also very good independent. Um, so it may look strange as how W is generated by reflections, but let me give you one example when uh, one doesn't know really anything. So, <clears throat> so let me remind the result of constant when K is C and uh, uh, which, which is important for uh, the presentation here. Uh, then uh, KG uh, let me give the same uh, notation. Kg is a free uh, Kg upper group model. Mm -hmm. uh, well, essentially, uh, this is the result of constant, although it's appropriate for enveloping algebra. But uh, if you if you know this development, then the result for enveloping algebra is is new. Right, now one may wonder whether uh, this is still okay, and if not, then why? Well, let me uh, consider one uh, example when we brought just one condition that uh, G is uh, a group of not simply. So uh, it's going to be a long uh, remark. So we take this group, G, uh, which is just B. Uh, G and L P, where P is the characteristic of K, and we suppose that P is bigger than or equal to 5. So this is a group of uh, a joint type. The three algebra is uh, also the real algebra of G is uh, P, G, L, P. And this real algebra is not simple. Uh, it's the right subalgebra PSLP has two dimension one and it is C. Uh, <clears throat> now, um, well, in this case, we still know, so this, in this case, we still know that uh, uh, KG is, this uh, is in uh, Springer and Steiner because G is a <coughs> group of the joint type, and in this case, we prove that this is true. So Chevalier restriction theory of Sorry? Oh yeah, thank you. Yes. Uh, so this is still true. Right, now, what is this invariant here? Um, of course, in this case, the wild group is, um, is a symmetric group uh, SP. And um, now we need to know what T is, and uh, T, of course, is, uh, uh, is a quotient of uh, natural permutation module. So we take K, uh, oh, sorry, we take uh, yeah, K B1 plus K B E. Uh, so this will be our matrix units, uh, EII, and we factor out the trace, which is going to be uh, E1 plus E2. So we, let's call this uh, vector space B, because this is um, how, uh, I think, how Greg, Gregor Kemper uh, denotes it. So uh, then we know uh, uh, K C alpha W, just uh, the same as S V star uh, S V. 
Navi is the quotient of the denominator. Of the permutation. This is a quotient of the permutation mode. So a symmetric group just permutes the SPIs. So SP permutes. Uh, there you are. And we uh, factor out the sum because it's just uh, the element that we factor out here. It's against it. So V is equal to C. Uh, v is equal to C, but I, I'm going to use this, this module. Okay, yeah. But maybe the notation is unnecessarily complicated. So, yeah, so it says it's this time. SP. And Kep, Gregor Kemper proved that this uh, invariant is not not Cohen Macaulay. So when uh, uh, P is bigger than equal to that's why I give this assumption that uh, this ring uh, is not Cohen Macaulay. And this is published in the journal of algebra. The uh, external algebra, I think, volume 215, So, in particular, this is not free. <laughs> but uh, there's more to it. <coughs> It's not easy to, uh, to, to construct uh, well, the basis of invariance for this thing because you, you want to take symmetric functions, of course. But uh, this module is a factor module of permutation module, but it's not a submodule. Uh, so, sorry. It doesn't come from the same just Sorry, I didn't come. It doesn't come by yeah, there is Chevalier restriction theorem uh, still holds, yes, in this case. And so, and the wild group is SP in this case. Did you tell when this Chevalier restriction theorem holds? I uh, Well, I, I'm just referring to Springer and Steinberg because it's sort of complicated. It, 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 hold, it holds for, for instance, for a joint group. But it is in one It is in the one yes. Although it's not entirely obvious. Yeah, so, so, okay, now uh, well, we need, uh, since it's not so easy to construct these invariants anymore, we cannot take uh, symmetric functions from them. Because they're not work, we need at least one uh, homogeneous system of parameters, at least, to, to be able to say something. And now uh, let me uh, just state a, a very general result, which I brought sometimes to work. So, uh, uh, let, uh, let L be any restricted the algebra. Uh, Can you finish those examples? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm continuing with this one. So, it, because I, I well, in order to be able to say it is something, I need some invariant, and I'm going to construct it now. But for that, I need to prove. So now, uh, finally, dimensional restricted B algebra, and uh, we, we need two parameters. So S is uh, maximal dimension um, of T, where T is a torus uh, in L. So it's a uh, lambda. Not all of them are conjugate, but uh, it's an important invariant. And uh, there is another one. Um, so, uh, and P is uh, the minimal number of uh, minimal <coughs> N such as there exists a very skillful non-empty uh, subset W, and I should say U, such that uh, when you erase u in this big power n, then it consists of semi-simple algebra. And it contains in, in L SS. 
Now again, you have a semi-simple level. Uh, sorry, total means uh, uh, ideally and consists of semi-simple elements. Uh, well, in this case, it's going to be just uh, just this T in, the, in, in this particular example. But it could be, for instance, zero if it's a pinion potent algebra, or it could be everything if, if it's at all. No, no, it's, uh, it's the same thing. Torus in the real algebra is just uh, sub restricted subalgebra on which the piece power map is one to one. Which implies that it is a bit. And it's the same consists of data analysis. Yes, it's the same. Over algebraically first. So this number is a little bit uh, awkward to define. So it's it just uh, the smallest number n such that, uh, well, some people actually write like right that. Such that if you erase all elements to the power of p, well, this number of times, then you will have all, all elements semi-simple. Excuse me, you said the torus are not all conjugate, maximal torus not no, all not conjugate. In, general, no. in characteristic. They may actually have maximal torus, may have different dimensions in characteristic. I this see. Can also Ah. So we take maximal dimension of maximal total. Any totals can be embedded into a maximal total. What do you mean to say simple? The semi-simple means that uh, S is semi-simple. Uh, and uh, belongs to the sum of uh, S e to house when i is either one or two to one. And this condition implies that other x is innocent, but it's strong. So here, the restricted the algebra structure is incorporated yeah. in the definition. Ah, it's strong. Yeah. Yes, it's strong. Yes. Yes. And every element has a Jordan Chevalier decomposition like this, xs plus xn, where xs is very simple, and this is new potent, which means when you erase it to this power, a lot of times you get zero. So, and they come in. And they could be simple. <coughs> well, you could change the structure, so you could make an element which was hard semi simple. You could make it into new point. It's the same. But if the same is zero, then it's Yes, then it's the same. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is yeah, well, this E is zero even from the E, uh, even from the spell contains a total capacity. This can be proved. Uh, contains a total uh, so, for example, uh, this number will be zero in this situation. Because here we do have a total capacity. So then uh, the following, uh, so now I'm going to introduce some invariants to this case. So then uh, we have uh, uh, what I call a minimum d polynomial. Then we have the following identity. P, uh, when we raise it to the power s plus e. So if e is 0, then we don't need to do anything. And this is equal to the summation of psi i of x times x e to the power i. And i runs, sorry, r plus e. And e runs from 0 up to s minus and this holds for all x in, uh, in f. So this, this is the general result which holds in any finite dimensional restricted field algebra. Moreover, uh, we have some nice properties. So uh, first of all, psi i of x to the t. <coughs> you may wonder what happens when we evaluate this. And, and this is what you would expect with psi i of x to the power e for all y. So we have this property, and they are all invariant, uh, and they are all invariant uh, under the action of our group, whatever it is, uh, KL. Uh, they are functions from our C algebra L, and here I have the automorphism group of L, which is the P structure, which again is automatic when the algebra has no sense. 
So this is a way uh, how we can construct invariants, but of course they, are, they have large degree. So the degree, which you can read from this equation, so the degree of psi i will be e to the s uh, plus e minus p e to the i plus So they are uh, invariants, but they have very large degree. Now another thing that we know uh, from p uh, okay, I will need to introduce a new port and cone at some point. So let n be the new port and cone for uh, all x and l such that <coughs> when you write, erase it to a very large power of p and you get zero. For n sufficient to know. So this is a new port and cone uh, um, of, of that. Now, this theorem tells you at least something about uh, and this, this is a conical uh, variety. <coughs> so, um, so, I'm sorry. Uh, so, there exists some, uh, uh, yes, I should also say that uh, the definition of uh, uh, is as follows. There exists uh, psi r in uh, k of L homogeneous. And such that these three conditions are for every x. So th this this power map is actually amorphous. It follows from the formulas I wrote on the board. It's a morphism given by some homogeneous polynomials of degree p. And when you raise any element to well, this power of p, then it becomes well, linearly dependent to something else. It's using coefficient power. That's what it said. So then a new important call of G is uh, the zero locus of this polynomial, psi zero, psi s minus one. And uh, all the reducible components of, oh sorry, N of L, uh, of N of L, have for dimension S. So also, because of this property, by the way, uh, this uh, element psi 0, psi s minus 1 uh, forms uh, a regular sequence. A regular sequence, so in, uh, in, uh, in, in particular, they are algebraically independent. Uh, in particular, Uh, so that so uh, now um, well now we can return uh, to our set. Uh, yes, there is a conjecture here, <coughs> but again it's very hard. So I, I conjecture that this is always irreducible, and maybe even a complete intersection for, for any restricted algebra. No assumptions that uh, uh, L is finite dimension. There are no assumptions. But when you say L of L, uh -huh. is uh, I, I've been put in price. Yes. What does it mean? Zero percent? Uh, this is a set zero of all common zero locus. Yeah, zero locus. Okay. Yeah, zero locus. Oh. I do not think it is. Yeah. It's uh, the set of all common zeros of so size zero. Okay. So it's minus one. The reason for that is very simple, because n of L in important points cannot intersect with T with a maximum torus, and this is zero. So, and this imposes really strong conditions. Uh, 
and for, for, for example, this implies immediately that this is set theoretically a complete intersection. So you know that it's pretty dimensional, right? You're yes, it is a dimensional, but uh, well, well uh, I don't know if, if it is uh, reducible and it's not so easy to prove. Is it not the interactivity zero? Sorry? You can't say it's very easy to prove because we have a structure of Lie algebra, so we have uh, by Levy mindset we have the composition uh, reductive plus new radical and for reductive it is not. But uh, in characteristic field there is no such thing and uh, the first interesting case uh, I don't know it would be cruel to give it as an example as a problem. Because I to be honest don't know the answer. Uh, if we, so let's consider a very simple case. So we have L, we just take S of 2 again. Uh, well, T bigger than 2. Uh, and then we tensor it by truncating polynomial in one variable. So this algebra is not semi-simple, but we can turn it into a semi-simple one by uh, by putting on the top partial derivative. So we take identity. It's like a current algebra, but uh, it's a truncated polynomial. And they put here identity tensor z uh, uh, by dt. So this will act as derivations on our real algebra. And the product is here. So it, it has dimension 3 p plus 1. And one can show that in this case, uh, I think p is equal to 1. So we have just one psi. In this case, we have uh, absolute p squared is equal to psi of x absolute p. So this is the minimal polynomial in this case. Um, and the question is, so the important column in this case will be uh, just uh, this hypersol. So the question is, is this reducible? And then, one, well, it's not really that straightforward. So now uh, we can uh, return to. Uh, so that's your G, so that's F. Sorry? So that's your G, so that's your F. Uh, yes, uh, L. Uh, well, first of all, this is going to be an idea of the whole F. And the product here is, is given by so X times an F, right? And y times a G. Uh, so this is how we define the real algebra x, y, times on x. So it's the most natural way. And then we have uh, the fifth thing that's going to go, which makes this real algebra semi simple. But it is not equal to its derived sub algebra. So it's derived sub algebra right there. So it's not known because it's semi simple. Sorry? It is not known. Not to, well, I, I, at some point I thought I, I proved it, but then I completely. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Interesting. Well, just an exercise. So Sorry? This the algebra is semi-simple. I mean, formally, it has zero, it, it, it only has one non-zero proper idea, which is it's the right so much, this one. And this one is not so good. <coughs> so therefore, it's radical is zero, and therefore, uh, well, we can call it some simple. But it, it gives an example. And there will be more semi simple algebras uh, to deal with, which are much more complicated than this one. But for instance, for WM, one knows that uh, this variety is irreducible. And <coughs> for, for most carpentite, the algebra solution. There are no counterexamples. Uh, the reason I made, sorry. In general, C0, this Ci do not uh, generate the idea. This is the No, no, so, yes, but already for SO2, you are right. For SO2, for instance, uh, for SO2, one can say what this Ci0 is, it's just Casimir relates to the power of T minus 1. So this is Ci0 for SO2. They do not generate in general invariant, but they do form some kind of uh, uh, 
<coughs> homogeneous system of parameters, which I'm going to uh, use this. So now why this? <coughs> So what do you know uh, about the uh, Lie algebra G? It's restricted Lie algebra uh, E, G, and T. And uh, in this Lie algebra, S, S is equal to T minus 1, and T is equal to 0. Mm -hmm. Because it contains a total Kartasava. So these parameters are known, and so therefore we have uh, a relation X to T of our piece power map is just honest. Uh, this part is power map, this part around the center. So x p to the p minus 1 is equal to psi i of x, so x p to the i runs from 0 to p minus 1. Don't you need brackets? Sorry? Don't you need brackets? I can, I can, but in this case the piece power map is natural, but I can write it. So, and then degree, you see these degrees are big. Um, so it's p to the power of uh, uh, p to the power of p minus 1 minus uh, uh, p to the power. So, and then we know that <coughs> from, so psi 0 psi p minus <coughs> 1 form or p minus 2, sorry. Uh, form a regular sequence. And we also know that the zero locus of, of these elements uh, is the important variety. And we know the important one in this case is very easy to compute. It's even irreducible in this case. So it's irreducible. Now, uh, well, this implies that a certain morphism is flat. So, uh, because that's uh, uh, the largest sort of, this is a special fiber of, uh, of the corresponding morphism. So, the morphism psi from, uh, from G to, um, to this affine space, P minus 1, given by uh, taking X to the collection psi 0 of X. Psi minus <coughs> uh, is flat. So what implies if it's flat? Uh, well, the flat means that all fibers have the same dimension mm -hmm. because it's special. They are all homogeneous, and uh, there are p minus one of them. And the, uh, the zero special fiber has the right to dimension. So this implies because they are homogeneous, this morphism is not. In fact, even three. This, this is community logic. Do I need to know that, that the fiber are reduced? They are reduced. In this case, they are reduced. I don't think we need to know this. So, uh, So this implies that um, um, K of G uh, is a flat uh, K of psi 0 psi P minus 2. And hence it is a free. Because a flat in, in the homogeneous setting implies free. Also, um, uh, uh, the all elements of psi belong to the invariant tree, uh, KG upper G. Because this is our group, this, this group respects the piece power map because the Lie algebra uh, has no center. This is a group P, G, L, P, which has uh, we are a joint 
so, uh, so we are on a very shaky ground here. One has to impose some, uh, some assumptions on, uh, uh, on G, otherwise things really go wrong very badly. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, uh, what, uh, what Kemper proves is that this screen uh, is not coin mapper. Uh, the whole way. Yeah. And coin mapper, if we know that it is free or some polynomial subgroup, and by definition it is. So what's so, uh, the uh, uh, Sorry? Uh, what do you, you prove? Yes, now? what do we prove? Well, we, uh, we prove our well, assumption was that suppose. Uh, this module is free over invariant. So the conclusion is ah, the uh, uh, so the conclusion is K G is not free over over this invariant. And uh, just to finish uh, just to finish this example. Let me say what is not known. Yeah. If you say that if P is not free, then some dimension jumps up. But the dimension of the fiber will jump up. No. Well, I thought it's just not free. That's flat, as I think before you said, uh, something is flat because the dimension is as, as expected. Okay. Well, the morphism, okay. well, the morphism has to be, I mean, there, there should have sufficient uh, precise number of generators. Uh, so what is not known, uh, what is invariant uh, algebra is. So they, uh, because it is closely related with this example, so uh, the point is that SLKP uh, is isomorphic to P, oh sorry, star, is isomorphic to PGLKP as uh, uh, KP as, uh, as GLP not. But again, because because we have this duality, the trace form which still exists. Uh, okay, and when we restrict it to a uh, self AP, which sits here, then it will it will pair uh, with this listing. Uh, yes, the algebra in Well, for group four invariance as well. In fact, I don't even know whether this is. So I introduced this uh, strange notion of non-degenerate Lie algebra last time, and I don't know whether this is non-degenerate. The situation is, uh, is somewhat better. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I should start the new topic. Maybe I will just make it at home. So to, uh, to relate somehow invariance in, in the Lie algebra, this, uh, this symmetric invariance, we need a symmetrization map, which doesn't in general exist in characteristic P. So what the analog of symmetrization map is provided by a strange map, which is, was first introduced by Milner. So I will call it Milner's map. So this will be, I think, 1.10. I think I lost my invention. Uh, no, 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.
No, one point down we already did. We already had one point down. No, that's one point down. So, um, okay. <clears throat> Well, what one needs is a, is, a, is a projection. So hourly algebra G uh, identifies with the image uh, uh, of, of uh, under this representation, so it's in some GLD. And we have a non-degenerate trace form, so uh, we can write down GLD as a direct sum. But they identify G with, with its image as a uh, faithful representation. So you can write it as G plus M, where M is uh, orthogonal complement. This is to our trace form. So you can do it. Uh, then, um, then we have a map, uh, and we have a map phi. And the map uh, by from the universe enveloping algebra of G, and this will go to GLB. And now we project, uh, we take a projection uh, to the first sum. Uh, uh, to the first projection, and this will go to G. So <coughs> then we have a, a map uh, by like this. And this is uh, subjective, and it is G invariant. Uh, now, uh, Milner introduced uh, a strange path. Uh, so now, what will be any G algebra? It doesn't even have to be finite dimensional, and so if uh, if you have uh, k elements, you know, you take any k elements, um, then, and if you have a subset i of indices, say i1, i s, they all pairwise distinct, say, in, in this set, 1k. So then I will uh, introduce some uh, shorthand notation when we said that x sub i is just a product uh, of this other. So x by 1, x by s, and the product is taken in, in u of i. So, so this, is what, uh, this is what we do, just have a shorthand uh, notation. And now we define uh, we define a linear map. In fact, it's going to be a co-algebra map uh, new from uh, from U of L into something which is really huge. So we take symmetric algebra of U of L. So this is really some, uh, an example of something enormous. And how we define it? So by uh, by first, it will not be clear whether it's well defined. So by the following rules, so we take mu of uh, uh, x1, xk, like so, like here, and then we, we define it to be uh, the summation over x i1. Now I need to uh, introduce a new product in this big algebra. So this will be the product, this product here. S of U of L. Otherwise, it will be confusing. So X I1, X I R, where the sum is over all the compositions is joint union. Over all the compositions of this uh, one K into this joint union x1 uh, so i1 i1 
So, well, so far it just uh, looks like nonsense. Uh, well, the first thing is what is well defined. And the second thing is um, um, there is a leading term here. So, mu of uh, x1, xk, there's a leading term in the filtration degree here. And this leading term corresponds to a decomposition which consists of singletons. But I, I are ordered sets. Uh, no, no. Uh, I, so I want, I, I, it must, yeah, I must say that I want less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Uh, we can repeat them, sir? No, no, that should not be repeated. So I1 is less than I2, less than I S. So this, so yeah. what's over there? Is the definition of I mm -hmm. XI? Yes, it's over there. Well, now, what has to specify? There are no repetitions. Uh, <coughs> so, sorry, another question. So all possible partition or partition with R terms? All possible partitions, all yes. Plus uh, lawyer terms. Lawyer terms in, in the canonical filtration of this uh, symmetric part, uh, yeah, of this symmetric part. It has a, uh, it has a gradient which gives rise to the filtration. Uh -huh. So I have a question about this. When you define these, these terms as X capital I up there on the board, Yes. I mean, if you have the indices 1, 2, 3. Uh -huh. Yeah, I will give you an example. We also have 2, 3, 1, and we also have 3, 1, 2. I mean, do we have all yeah, the Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the last thing I'm going to say. I will give you an example. Uh, but has to be careful. And this example also shows why the characteristic P is uh, actually interesting in this definition. So let's consider uh, one example when we apply uh, when we apply mu to uh, x1, x2, x3, whatever this unknown sign. Then, uh, then well, there, there will be this hidden term, and then we go over all the composition. So you have x1, x2, x3 uh, plus x1, x3, x2. Plus, uh, I think, plus x1, x2, x3. And finally, we have um, x1, x2, x3. So now we, we just uh, uh, take care of, I think I, I wrote down all the compositions. No, which one? Which is one? Sorry? I don't understand the third term. The third term. X1, yes. X1, X3, X2. Yes. So uh, now, but uh, what happens? So suppose, suppose that we have uh, this is sort of uh, uh, the general uh, formula. So suppose that we have X1 is equal to X2, and this is X, and suppose X3 is Y. Well, then we just specialize in this case. So then this formula will become so x, x, y it will become like this. There will be some uh, similar terms. So, and the reason for that there will be uh, some or should be uh, so this comes from there and this comes x1 So this one is uh, x square y, and this is x y x, oh, and this one is uh, x, uh, and this one is x uh, x y. But this should go here again. Yeah. No, no. Yes, because they come here. Yes. 
Det är inte som heter kan. Ja, det det kommer så. Ja, det är kommer så. X1 is equal to X2, and this is y this, well, this, these two things commute, and that's why we have this condition too. So this will merge with that. And now, uh, what happens? Well, now, this, suppose we are in characteristic 3, and we want to commute. Uh, compute this thing. Then it becomes, there will be even more similar sums, which are the x, 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 uh, plus x, uh, sorry, plus 3, uh, x square x, plus x cube. So if, uh, and this will, will be equal to x, 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 plus x cube, if the characteristic is equal. So in prime characteristic, there will be some consolation. Um, and now we have, uh, so this is, uh, this is a, a sort of general nonsense uh, stuff which you can apply for any algebra, but we have this special situation so we can compose it now uh, this, with this map mu, which was introduced by mu. What the commas are doing in the left? There are no commas. Mu of x cube, not of x, x, x. So uh, now we define a mark beta. So now we define mark beta from now, from what we really want, from U of G to S of G. Uh, by, by setting, by setting beta is equal to uh, on behalf of our projection pi. Um, so the first thing is that mu is well defined. So you choose a yes, that, this was a uh, mu that claimed that mu was well defined, which was later proved by Friedman and Kasch. So it requires a proof. And uh, that was uh, uh, done by Friedman. Mu, mu just claimed such a model. Could it be explained using for multiplication and Yes, this is a co-algebra map, yeah. But it's the fact way when you think when x1, x2, x n is a basis. No, for all elements. For all, uh, for all elements in, uh, um, uh, in the real algebra. There is a linear map which extends a uh, map uh, defined by this property. So, um, now we define beta uh, by this formula, beta x1 and k uh, to be, so we just compose it with, uh, uh, with our projection that we defined earlier. So we, we take pi to ui1, to, so we can define it as xi1. Of pi of x by one. Uh, now I will, I'm going to use the same problem, pi of x by one. And the summation is over all the composition. Or this thing. And there is a, a linear map uh, which satisfies these properties for any choice of vector scenario. So then, uh, beta is a filtration preserving. Filtration preserving G equivalent uh, isomorphism. Linearize them all. Within uh, U of G and the uh, passage. So 
Until next time, I'll come to you next time. Sorry? Well, we, the, the reason mark which satisfies this property for any choice of vector is Yes, and what And this mark is a filtration preserving uh, GF variant linear isomorphism between these two vectors. It does not preserve algebra structure. And it plays the role of symmetrization, like because in characteristic zero, we wouldn't even need this. In characteristic zero, it is always true that these things are isomorphic as G modules. But this implies that the invariance on the left are isomorphic as an algebra to the invariance on the right. We'll come to this. I mean, not always, but in our case, it will imply. 